The word of God we'll consider today is the gospel from Luke chapter 16. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this past week I spent some time down in my office watching a bunch of videos on YouTube. And before you start saying, come on, Pastor, that's not what you're getting paid for. It wasn't like cat videos and music videos. Uh, I do that at home. Uh, <laughs> no, this, I was watching some things uh, for the sermon this week. I, I was watching all of these interviews where a person would go out on the streets and just talk to random people and they would ask a question. And in all the videos I watched, uh, it, was, it was kind of the same question. It was this one. When you die, are you going to heaven or hell? Can you imagine some of the responses that question got? Uh, it was interesting. Uh, let me share just a few with you. Uh, this man you see here said, I believe I'm going to heaven because I grew up in the church. Uh, this young lady wasn't quite as sure, but said, I'll go to heaven maybe if the rest of my life I'm a good person. Uh, this middle-aged man here, he wasn't quite sure that heaven and hell existed, but he did think there was an afterlife. He said, you just keep coming back until you get it right. Uh, this college kid was my favorite. He said, I definitely think I'm going to heaven because I'm an overall good guy. Although he did say, after my decision-making lately, I might have some repenting to do. If, if you were to, to go out this week and ask that question, are, are you going to go to heaven or hell when you die? And you, you ask that to the people in your neighborhood or your play group or your office or Friday night over drinks, what kinds of answers would you expect to hear? And the reason I'm, I'm thinking about that this week is, is our sermon text. When you take a look at the story that Jesus tells in the Gospel of Luke, it really begs that question. And, and the two characters, the, the two men that Jesus talks about in this story, uh, the rich man and the poor man, Lazarus, <clears throat> they, they probably would have answered that question very differently uh, if they had been asked it while they were still alive. If you, if you ask that rich man before he died, are you going to heaven or hell? I'm guessing he would have answered, well, I'm going to heaven. I mean, look at me, I'm rich. God must love me. My life is good. Uh, maybe he would have pointed to family connections. I, I'm an Israelite. Of course I'm going to heaven. We're all Abraham's family here. Do riches, though, is, is that the mark of, of God's favor? Is it when you're rich in life, does that determine your eternal destiny? Is it, is it a family connection or a church connection that secures your ticket to heaven? Or on the flip side, is it, is it true that if you're poor and miserable in this life, that means God must hate you or be upset with you, and so you're not so sure where you're going in the end? Uh, let's take a look at Jesus' story, because he clears that up pretty quickly, doesn't he? Uh, he says, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. So you've got this rich man who has it all, seemingly. He's got the clothes he likes to wear, the food he likes to eat. He, he lives a pretty luxurious lifestyle. And then contrasted, you've got this dirt-poor beggar thrown at his gate. Lazarus, who doesn't have any health in his bones. He's covered in sores. He'd love to just have the leftovers from the rich man's dinner table. But instead, the only thing that keeps him company are these mangy dogs that are bothering him. And if your standing with God was determined by how you were treated in this life, how you were blessed or not, how you were clothed or not, it'd be a no-brainer. The rich man was on his way to heaven. And Lazarus wasn't. But you know that's not how the story goes. Jesus goes on to say, The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Clearly their station in life did not reflect their relationship with God or their eternal destination. Lazarus had it all, or excuse me, the rich man, he had it all in life. <laughs> Lazarus didn't, but in the afterlife, it was, it was reversed. 
You know, Lazarus, his name in Hebrew means God helps me. And and that's just what he found. Though no one helped him out in life, in death, he had God's helpers, the angels, carrying up to Abraham's side to to that picture of heaven. And the rich man, well, I'm sure everyone knew his name in life, but in death he's nameless, helpless, hopeless in hell. Now you get to the the, the point of the, this point in the story, and you kind of wonder, well, well, why? Why is the, the rich man down in hell, and why is Lazarus up in heaven? And I suppose you might say, well, just look at the rich man. He deserved it. He had been given so many blessings in life, and he didn't use them for God's glory. He had Lazarus laying at his gate, and he never went out of his way to help him. Of course he ended up in hell. Maybe they'd even point in, in our, our lesson Uh, Abraham says to him, Son, remember in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. But is that Jesus' point, that if you you do good things in life, you'll go to heaven, and if you don't, you'll end up in hell? No. So what is Jesus' point? Well, if you look at the end of Jesus' story, the point becomes very clear, doesn't it? Because after this rich man realizes there's no second chance, there is no hope, I am doomed to this agony forever. You, you hear Jesus say that in this story, he now he begs Abraham, well, at least, at least help my brothers out who are back on earth. Give them a sign so they don't end up here. In fact, he asks that the sign be Lazarus. Send him back from the dead. Then they'll, then they'll know. But then we get to the point of the story. What does Abraham reply? He says, If your brothers do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Do you see the point? Ending up in in heaven or hell has nothing to do with what you have or don't have when it comes to possessions in this life. It doesn't have anything to do with your, your family connections, your church connections. It all came down to God's word. Lazarus believed the word, listened to the word. The rich man didn't. And so one of them ended up in heaven and one of them ended up in hell. Jesus is really making the point for us today that when it comes to his word, we want to use it. Use the means of grace for your time of grace. The means of grace is, is God's word. That is the, the only means he has given us to know who he is and what he's done to save us. And, and we only can use it for a short time. This time of grace, the time we have here on earth to know our God and who he is. And God says, during that time, I've given you the tool you need. I've given you the answer. And you know, for many of you here this morning, you're kind of looking at me with these blank stares going, okay, okay. <laughs> Pastor, you know you're preaching to a bunch of Lutherans, right? We got it. Jesus died for us. Jesus rose. Faith in him gets us into heaven. We've heard it in the Bible a million times. Well, that would be the right answer, but then let me ask you a a follow-up question. If, If that's true, does your life then, your time of grace, always reflect that? That God is the most important, the most cherished, the most longed for person in your life? That his word which reveals him is the most precious gift that he's given in your life? Or do you find yourself cherishing the other gifts that God has given more than the God who gives them? You know, I, I got to be honest, that, that's what happens to me often. <laughs> We're going to sing in just a little bit here. We're going to sing a a hymn after the sermon. One of my favorite hymns. It's called, Lord, You I Love with All My Heart. And there's a line in this hymn in the first verse that says, Earth has no treasure I would share. Heaven itself were void and bare if you, Lord, were not near me. And yet when I look at my own heart, I've, I've got to admit, there are days when I look at the homes and the bank accounts of some of you and go, well, that's the treasure I'd like to share. There are times when I wake up in the morning and I rush past my Bible sitting on my nightstand or sitting on my desk at work and, and I get onto the, 
more important things I've got going that day. There are days even where I find myself in love with the gifts God has given more than I'm in love with the God who gave them. I'll look at my wife and my kids and and think, boy, would heaven be as good if they weren't there with me? And if we find that our, our longing for the joys of this life is greater than our longing to be with the Lord, or, or that we are quick to, to rush by the eternal word of life to get onto the busyness of this life, if, if we find that, that we are wrapped up with the gifts and not the giver, well, that's a problem. It's a problem that reveals a sinful heart. But by God's mercy, it's a problem that he's dealt with. And he dealt with it and then told us how he dealt with it in his word. I mean, that is why God's word is, is the means, the, the tool that funnels his grace to us. Because in his word, we hear that we have a God who created us to live with him forever. And, and though we sin, he sent a Savior to remove that sin so we could be with him forever, united with him forever. And, and that's the message, that's the truth that Jesus wants you to know. In fact, he wants you to know it so desperately. Uh, the, the night before he died, it was one of the very things he prayed for. He was praying on the night before he died for his, his disciples. And listen to a portion of that prayer from John's Gospel. He said, My prayer is not for them alone, for his disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. God loves you. And God gave you his word, his means of grace, so that during your time of grace you could know that love and know what's waiting for you when your time here on earth is up. This past week, I teach catechism here at Mount Olive, and this past Wednesday, I gave a quiz to some of our catechism students. And one of the questions I asked at the end of the quiz was similar to the one that I, that I listened to in all those interviews on YouTube this week. Uh, I asked the kids, if, if you die tonight and, and God were to say to you, why should I let you into heaven, how would you respond? And all the answers were really good. Um, sounds like parents and teachers are doing a good job through the years. But let me share just a few of the answers with you that I got from those kids. They said, I believed your word, Lord. You sent your son. He lived perfectly. He died for my sins. He rose again. Because of him, you love me. Because of Jesus, I will go to heaven. Those kids knew the answer to the question because they had listened to God's word and by God's grace, the Holy Spirit had convinced them of its truth. And that's, that's why we listen to God's word too. That's, that's what's going to happen as you come here every week for church and as you study with others in, in Bible class and Sunday school and as you gather around a, a home dinner table with a devotion book or a Bible as you commute to work listening to a sermon podcast, you're going to be fed with the means of grace for your time of grace. And you're going to find in it this treasure that gives you a sharpened focus in life and helps you to fix your eyes on God and the life to come with him. My prayer for you all this week is that you would rest in, in God's word. Find time to rest in his word this week. And as you do, know that you rest in it for this life, yes, but in that word is revealed a God who will welcome you home into his loving arms where you'll rest with him forever. To him be the glory. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.